So you just bought a new bike. Doesn't have to be brand new, but it's new to you. Doesn't matter. You're wondering if it's ready to ride and ready to race. Here's 10 things that I suggest you should do to get your bike safer, faster, and more mechanically sound. Let's get straight into it. The first thing that I like to change on my bikes, and I suggest that you should too, is your rider cockpit. So that consists of grips, levers, and bars. So on mine, I like to run these ODI grips. They're sweet. I like to run my levers a little bit further in so I can just get one, two fingers on and my bars in a nice neutral position to what I like. That's all up to you. And if you're super picky, you can even change the tires. These are sweet, I love them, it's all good. On to the next one. Now, if your bike's brand new, or it's had a new piston just before the guys sold it to you, what you need to do is do some heat cycles. So in the motor, there's all different kinds of metals between your piston, your piston rings, your head, your valves, everything's different metals usually. So with that, they're always going to heat up at different temperatures and if it's new, you need to mix them around and get them all nice and warm so they're bedding correctly. So on a new bike, I like to do about three to four heat cycles. It gets everything nice and warm in there. Just start it with your electric start or kickstart, doesn't matter. And just let it idle till it's warm at the top of the radiators, till it's warm to the touch. Maybe go let it idle for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Heat cycles are super important and you need to do it to your bike if it's got new engine components. You might be in between a few heat cycles, so I suggest that you do a general check over the whole bike. So you're gonna to wanna to check all your critical components, such as your front and rear axles, your triple clamps, your bars, levers, subframe, a few engine components like clutch cover, you know, just check it all. If you notice some things are loose, you may not have confidence in whoever had the bike before you, just do a bit more of a check and run through with the manual that you provided with a brand new bike and hopefully with a second hand bike and use everything with a torque standard, torque wrench and do it with a standard that says in your manual. Once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to bed your brakes in. So your engine's warm, it's had a few heat cycles, you've done a general check on your bike, you know it's good to ride. You're gonna to wanna to bed your brakes in. So without bedding your brakes in, it'll mean that on the outside of your brake pad, you've got some manufacturer's film, and on a brand new bike, it'll be on the brake disc as well. So some people call this like a glazed brake disc or a glazed pads, and it pretty much means that when you grab your levers or you grab your rear brake, it's not gonna to work to the standard of what it should. What you need to do is just ride up and down, you know, concrete driveway, or if you're at the track, just go up maybe around the pitch, just first gear, drag the brakes, get them nice and hot front and back. And what that'll do is that'll burn that film off on the pads and the brake disc if it's brand new, and it'll get your, get your brakes biting in like crazy. It only took me about 10 to 15 minutes to get this to happen. You'll definitely notice that the lever might pull in for instance, like all the way into here, but then as you go, it might, it'll go further out because they're getting a bit more bite and they're all bedding in, everything's getting warm. That's what needs to happen on brand new bikes and bikes with new brake pads. Once you've done that, it's pretty much ready to hit the track, but you definitely need to check your suspension clickers before you head out. If it's a brand new bike and if it's a bike that's new to you, the suspension clickers may not be exactly where they should be in the manual. So I suggest you go through with your manual, you go with a flathead screwdriver in my case, and you just you go all the way in and then count the way back out to the middle, whatever it says in your in your manual. So that consists of your slow, uh, slow and high speed compression if you've got both, your rebound in the forks and the shock. You just need to check it all and make sure it's all as it should be in the manual because that'll have you safe up on the track. I've seen some guys with some really fast rebound on a brand new bike over the bars. Obviously they hurt themselves, but they hurt their pride and joy which they've just bought. You don't want that to happen. So I suggest that along with bedding your brakes in, you need a warm clutch up. So as you ride along, low RPM, nice and slow, you know, first, second gear, it's not gonna matter. As you do that, you need to warm your clutch plates up as well because it's a brand new pack in a brand new bike. And if it's a second hand bike, old mates told you, it's a brand new clutch, brand new brake pads, you need to bed it all in. So as you get your clutch nice and warm, the pack's gonna get hot and obviously expand and contract, along with the oil that's in there, which is obviously brand new if he's done the, done the new clutch plates, hopefully. What's that all gonna mean? Is that up here on the lever, it may feel a little bit different once it gets warm, It'll only happen once, hopefully, and it'll just mean that as everything packs in, it's gonna be more reliable out on the track and trail. The next thing I like to do with my bikes is obviously, as the, new, as the oil's all new, the clutch plates are new, everything's brand new with brand new bikes, is the gears are new as well. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is get, it, get all that oil moving, get oil dispersed overnight, all the parts, and you may notice a few things got a little bit, little bit funky at first, but that's just a brand new bike, everything's got a bed in, and if there's anything too funky, go see a local mechanic from the bike shop, they'll help you out, and they'll, they'll definitely sort it out. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is just a nice slow speed, may even lug a little bit in you know, fourth, third or fourth gear, that's totally fine. All you're doing in the gearbox is just getting the oil over all the parts and getting the gears nice, getting the gears just used, because brand new, they're gonna have brand new hard facings, manufacturing marks, you need to just use them, get them, get them all moving around, and, 
Same, same idea with your clutch and brakes, you just need to get it moving around and get it nice and warm. It's going to create a more reliable and safer ride for you. Set the sag and then go out and do your first 45 minutes or half the hour, however how long your first moto is. And once these things are warm, you want to check your sag again because I, most of the time the sag will, be, sag will be a bit more than what it was when you first set it because once everything's been used, you know, the, the suspension tends to be a little softer than what it was when it was brand new. Not by much, but just, real, just by a little bit. So you're going to be super careful of that when you're out riding for the first time. So you've been out to the track, you've washed your bike, and you're wondering what you've got to do because it's a brand new bike. Along with cleaning your air filter, which needs to be done every single ride, after your first hour on the bike, you need to change your oil and you need to put a new oil filter in it and clean out the mesh guard. I see a lot of guys, that do their standard changes and at the first five hours, there's, there's a bit more, because they've got manufacturing marks on the gears and, the, and all around the motor because it's a brand new bike. Metal shavings that'll come out off the gears and whatnot, and you'll notice that in the mesh filter. You need to pull that out and clean it at the first hour. Do a, do an oil change, you usually do it five hours or 10 hours and do it straight away at one hour. After your first hour on the track, get in and do it. It's gonna save you money, hopefully. It'll, it will definitely save you money because it means you won't have metal floating around your gearbox for the next four or five hours. One hour on the bike, get in and change that oil, put a new filter in it, do a normal service and get it new and fresh in there. Finally, there's a few things that I like to add to my bikes whether they're new to me or brand new, just to make them a little bit better and a little bit better for maintenance. So first off, if your bike doesn't have an hour meter, it needs to get it on there. Get it on there, get it sweet. I know some bikes these days, brand new, may not come with an hour meter. Get one on there from, from brand new, it'll be zero, zero, and every every minute that that engine's running, the hour meter's ticking over, you already know that. Another thing I highly suggest that a lot of trail guys do if you're racing trans motos or New South Wales off-roads, is whack a bash plate on there, it's gonna save the engine cases. If you're just doing motocross, Maybe you just had a motocross guard and a Yamaha bag, a pretty sweet one. Not as beefy as a bash plate, but it's gonna stop some rocks going through your sump, which is obviously gonna save you guys money. Last thing I like to add to my bikes is some hand guards. If I'm out racing some rocky stuff or if I'm out racing motocross, I like to have hand guards on so my hands don't get pummeled by rocks. Apart from all that, enjoy your new bike, whether it's brand new or just new to you. Get out, ride it, do all those things that I've suggested, and if I've missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, and you like and you want to see some more of my stuff just like subscribe and let me know what you thought